Okay, I'm getting ready to put some uh, oil in it. I'm converting this system from R12 to 134A, and I'm going to put ester oil in there instead of PAG oil or mineral oil. Mineral oil was what was in it before, and PAG oil is not compatible with uh, the mineral oil. So I'm using ester oil, which is compatible with uh, R12 or 134A. Supposedly it takes 10 ounces when it's empty. I've got eight ounce, eight ounces of oil. So I'm gonna put that in there, assuming maybe I still got a couple of ounces between the condenser and the evaporator. I've already pulled a vacuum on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's down to as low as it'll go. 20 knot minus or pull it down to 29. And it's been sitting for about an hour now with these gauges closed. So the so the pump is isolated um, from the van. But these hoses still read pressure up to here. They just aren't connected here anymore this way. That's what these valves do. And it's been sitting here holding just fine. Hasn't moved a bit. So as far as I can tell, everything is nice and tight. So what I'm going to do now is, is uh, put 8 ounces of ester oil in there. So I'm going to turn the vacuum pump on, uh, open up this valve here so that I'm, I'm uh, sucking it this way through the high side. And then I'll unhook this from here and stick it into my oil and let it suck the oil in through the blue line until it's all inside there. And then I'll hook this back up and then I'll vacuum it down again for oh, at least 30 minutes to get any air out that was introduced when I sucked in through this blue line. This is the oil I'm putting in. It has dye in it. Ester 100 with dye. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, take the lid off, put my blue hose in there. I've got the low side manifold valve shut and the high side open. I've got a vacuum here. So now let's just suck this in there. down now you see it's sucked down half the bottle now see it go down worried about the air I'm sucking in because I'm going to vacuum this down again anyway. Okay, all the oil's in there now. I put the blue line back on the manifold. Gauge set. Thought I would mention I've got the yellow hose hooked to my my vacuum pump. The high side is open. The low side is closed. And so it's drawing it this way through the high side and vacuuming down the, the system. And then when I get it, after about 40 minutes of doing that, I will uh, 
put my refrigerant up to the other end of this yellow hose. This will be closed, and then I'll open this up and charge it through the low side. So right now, the, f the vacuum is coming this way. When I'm charging, this will be closed, and it will be... Uh, refrigerant will be going this way. Okay, I'm gonna I've got a can on here. Got my tap on there. Tap screwed down, so the can shut right now. Let me go ahead and open it up. If I hold it right side up like this, it should go in as a vapor. The liquid will be on the bottom. Didn't have to shake the can and do anything. I may hold it to warm it up so it'll better chance of it all coming out of the can. Okay, at this point I've got the system charged up. I've converted it from R12 134A. Got about three and a half. 12 ounce cans of 134, 134A in there. And I've had it running for a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and purge the line, take this can off, close this valve here on the high side. I'm gonna turn it up. So now this, is, this hose is isolated from the uh, AC system. Open up the high side, and all the refrigerant from here will go into here. You'll see it right there. Not a lot, just a little bit. So now this yellow hose. And this hose will have refrigerant in it. So if I open it up, it should suck all the refrigerant out of this hose and this, this one and put it into the system through this hose. So you saw the gauge go up for a second. So now this gauge is at zero. have much refrigerant left in any of these hoses because I sucked it all in through the blue hose if you have a check valve here if you don't have okay while the compressor was running I, I closed the uh, the valve on the low side where the blue hose go so right now these valves for the high side and the low side are closed so this hose has about 30 psi in it so there shouldn't be any refrigerant in any of these lines just uh, maybe 30 psi 27 to 30 in that hose so when I take it off it's going to be about the same as if you to take the, the hose off the can and you take this hose off so there shouldn't be much lost done and I believe we've got uh, the temperature that should be coming out right now the AC running should be about around 48 degrees somewhere around there with the temperature and humidity for today and I've got about between 50 and 52 so we're being converted from R12 to 134A that's pretty good I don't know if you can hear that, but once you turn it off, it sounds like it's leaking, but it's not leaking. It's the pressure equalizing between the high side and the low side through the orifice tube. That's why your gauges, if your orifice tube is not plugged, your gauges should read about the same when it's sitting static with no compressor running.
no engine running, no compressor running. So this is normal to hear this sound. You can see how cold this line is here. See now it's gone away. So if you put gauges on here, it should should say somewhere around between 70 and 80 psi. I think it was around 80 the last time I checked when it was sitting with the engine off. So there's the temperature in here right now. So we can take all this stuff off and put the stuff back on that I took off the air intake. <laughs> 